Hare Krishna. Is anybody on the call? Anybody on the call? Hare Krishna. No. want me to play with you. Is that all you want is somebody to play with you all the time? Play, play, play. Coco just wants someone to play with her. That's all she cares about. Hare Krishna. Hmm. We got to wait. Nobody's on the call, baby. No one's on the call yet. Oh, you're dragging. Ooh, we're a little rowdy one. You're very rowdy. I love you, little Coco. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Krishna. All glories to Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada. Please accept mine too. All glories to Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada. How are you, Shraddha Mataji? Good. How are you feeling, Mataji? I'm not well, Mataji. I haven't stepped out for five days. And, uh, oh, my God. It's flu. I just, I'm weak. I can't, I cannot move. I just have to uh, let it take its course. It's chills and fever and and weakness, you know? That's what I have mostly. Yes. So are you taking any medication, Mother Day? Now I'm starting to take something because it's just not, um, it's not getting alleviated. You know what I'm saying? It, it just, mm -hmm. uh, no energy whatsoever. I, I tried yesterday. I said, well, I'll get up and I'll see if I can do some, Wash some clothes, you know, get, do something. Yeah. <coughs> I washed a couple of loads of clothes. I was holding on to the banister. I was so weak. Oh. I almost passed out. It's flu, you know, because um, yep. yeah. one Prabhu said he got it like that. He said, I used to get so chilled that I had to go to the hospital. I would get real, you know, and I don't think the flu shot is the answer, to be honest with you. I just think we yeah. have a lot of. A lot of bad viruses going around, you know. It is, it is. So, Madhuri, please take care because I think it's, uh, you know, uh, really takes a toll on your, uh, you know, energy and, uh, you know, all your efficiency and everything, you know, goes down with your sick. Exactly. So, I'm trying not to, you know, I canceled. I had all kinds of appointments this week. I canceled. No, I didn't cancel my Krishna service, but I canceled, you know, all these other things. You know, and I said, you know what? I'll just do them all next week. That's all. Yeah, you need to 
give give your body a rest and you know time to recover i think i think today was you know i started to take some flu and cold medication and it's the first day i feel just a little better cuz my husband says now you got a fever going and and that helped right away uh, let's to take hope the Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm sure I'll be fine, Mataji. That's very sweet of you. No, it's just the common the common cold and flu season, you know? Yeah, but you, you know, in the future, you need to increase or build up your immunity so that you don't catch so easily, you know? You know, I've been doing that. I've been doing this Ayurvedic diet, but uh -huh. I don't know why. It just, uh, I catch everything. I don't know why. Um, it, but, you know, I haven't been doing it that long either. I think you have yeah. to be doing it for a while before your body yeah. really builds an immunity with Ayurveda, mm -hmm. no? Yeah, yeah, right, right. <coughs> I'm sorry, Mataji? Should we start with the pears now? Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay. okay. Om Jnana Srinandasya Ganana Jana Shalakaya Shakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobitam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Pakada Mayam Dadat Isva Padantikam Pancha Kalpa Sarubya Sacha Kripa Sindubya Eva Cha Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Narayanam Namaskritya, Naramcheva Narottamam, Devim Sarasvatim Vyasam, Tato Jayam Udirayat, Nashta Prayeshu Abadreshu, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki, Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Jai. I don't know where, uh, who's speaking today. Do you have any idea, Ma? Ah, very nice. Okay, did someone take my place yesterday? Yeah, Mansinga Mataji read yesterday. Oh, how nice. Oh, I have so to thank did, her. She did, yeah, uh, covered part of the verses, and I'm, I'll be covering the remaining part from yesterday. Very good, Mataji. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to mute my phone for just one, oh. you know, for a couple of minutes, okay? And I'm listening. Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hare Krishna, Mataji. I'm also listening. Hare Krishna, Ruchi Mataji. How are you? Okay, so we are reading today Canto 2, Chapter 9, Text 35. And also, we did the same thing yesterday, but she read part of it, and I'm going to be completing the remaining part. So I'm going to read the verse first. Yatha Mahanti Bhutani Bhute Shucha Chava Shivanu. Pravishtani uh, Pravishtani uh, Sorry, I just I was reading something different. Pravishtani uh, Pravishtani Yathate Nunateshvaham Okay, translation O Brahma Please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created 
and at the same time I am outside of everything. Purport by Shila Parupa. So I'll be reading from the third page, page 497, the last paragraph, the Lord. The Lord can award anyone and everyone liberation, that is mukti, from the bondage of material existence. Yet, he rarely awards the privilege of love of Godhead, as confirmed by Narada, muktim dadhati karhichit samana bhakti yogama. This transcendental devotional service of the Lord is so wonderful that the occupation keeps the, deser the deserving devotee always wrapped in psychological activities without deviating from the absolute touch. Thus, the love of Godhead developed in the heart of the devotee is a great mystery. Brahmaji previously told Narada that the desires of Brahmaji are never unfulfilled because he is always absorbed in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Nor has he any desire in his heart save and accept that and accept the transcendental service of the Lord. This is the beauty and mystery of the process of Bhakti Yoga. As the Lord's desire is infallible because he is Achyuta, similarly, the desires of the devotees in the transcendental service of the Lord are also Achyuta, infallible. This is very difficult, however, for the layman to understand without knowledge of the mystery of devotional service. As it is very difficult to know the potency of the touchstone. As touchstone is rarely found, a pure devotee of the Lord is also rarely to be seen. Even amongst millions of liberated souls, Koteshav Api Mahamune, out of all kinds of perfections attained by the process of knowledge, yoga perfection in devotional service is the highest of all and the most mysterious also. Even most mysterious than the eight kinds of mystic perfection attained by the process of yogi performances. In the Bhagavad Gita, 18.64, the Lord therefore advised Arjuna about this Bhakti Yoga. Sarva Guhyata Nam Gurte Sarva Guhyata Mam Guhyaha Just hear from me again about the most confidential part of the instructions in Bhagavad Gita. The same was confirmed by Brahmaji to Narada in the following words. Idam Bhagavatam Nama Yanme Bhagavato Idam Sangraho Yam Vibhutanam Vibhutinam Tavam Itat Vipuli Kuru Brahmaji said to Narada, Whatever I have spoken to you about the Bhagavatam was explained to me by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And I am advised and I am advising you to explain these topics nicely so that people may easily understand the mysterious bhakti yoga by transcendental loving service to the Lord. It is to be noted here that the mystery of bhakti yoga was disclosed to Brahmaji by the Lord himself. Brahmaji explained the same mystery to Narada. Narada explained to Vyasa. Vyasa explained it to Sukadeva Goswami. And that, and that same knowledge is coming down in an unalloyed chain of disciplic succession. If one is fortunate enough to have received the knowledge in the transcendental disciplic succession, surely, he will have the chance 
to understand the mystery of the Lord and that of Shrimad Bhagavatam, the sound incarnation of the Lord. Very interesting and very deep topic here. So, uh, yesterday, uh, Mansi Ganga Mataji read the first half uh, of this verse and she explained certain points. So, I'm going to kind of just summarize what she said so that we continue, uh, you know, uh, following from where she left. So I'm going to read the translation one more time. It says, Brahma, O oh Brahma, please know that the universal elements enter into the cosmos and at the same time do not enter into the cosmos. Similarly, I myself also exist within everything created and at the same time I am outside of everything. So this is uh, Lord Krishna is actually addressing Brahma. And the I here is actually uh, Lord Krishna. So when Mansi Ganga Mataji, when she said, so I'm just going to summarize. Uh, she gave a very nice, uh, wonderful lecture and tried to summarize it in a, you know, uh, in a very uh, understanding way. Yeah, so the topic covered so far, it says, um, I mean, the things which was discussed is that the element exist outside the cosmos and also used in the universe to construct all the things. Like we know there is a five elements, you know, ether, air, water, fire, uh, earth, and all these elements, they, anything in the universe we see, which is moving or unmoving, are made up of all these five elements. So these elements are inside. They, the inside means they are, these things are made up of these elements and these elements are outside also. Same way Lord Krishna also exists inside and outside everything. Because inside he exists as a, as a Paramatma in everybody's heart and outside he exists in, uh, you know, he is existing in every, um, uh, what do you call it, is every uh, Anu or any Parmanu, any kind of atom within this universe. And also he is simultaneously exists uh, is uh, enjoying his pastimes in Vaikuntha, you know, in uh, Vaikuntha and Goloka Vrindavan. So this was a, one point which was discussed. Uh, the second point she discussed was that uh, that it, all that universe which is the you know we see around is, is the material energy of the God and his plenary extension. And he resides in every living entity as a super soul. <clears throat> then third point she talks about that uh, the mystery of the Lord, which can be only understood by the devotional service. It cannot be, uh, it cannot be understood by the impersonalists who have no devotion. And what is a mystery? That how the Lord is all pervading is you know simultaneously he is also uh, you know in Guloka Vrindavan. So mostly impersonalists they think that because Krishna is in everything, uh, you know the God is is uh, he in as a, in his Brahman form he is existing each and every atom of this uh, you know material creation. So he his independent or exclusive uh, existence does not exist. So they think that, uh, you know, if you if you think of something really big and if you take out, uh, you know, uh, you know, you know, take out something from that, some small portion of it, uh, bit by bit, that things will be over. It's like if you have a, like number 10, if you keep taking, subtracting one out of it, so then you get, then it will remain nine, then you take out one, it will be eight. So you will be leaving that object from which you're taking should be, uh, reducing in the size, but it doesn't happen uh, like that because Krishna, even if the Krishna is being, uh, is you know, is all pervading, is, is in, existed in, is exist, he exists into each and every part of this universe. Still, he remains the full. Like you know, that was Purnasya, Purnamada. Even if you have, you know, he created hundred things, and still he remains 
that's complete. He is never, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, if you take out something from Krishna is giving something out, so he will be, you know, having that much quantity less. He still remains the same. He still remains the full. So <clears throat> that is the, you know, uh, important part here because, uh, and this can only be understood with the uh, pure devotional service or be understood by the devotees only. And this is kind of a, uh, a mystery which which has been discussed here many times. It's called also Rehastam, that uh, the spiritual knowledge is actually the the key, or I would say that devotion service, uh, you know, loving devotion service is the key or the to open this mystery. So if you you cannot know this mystery unless until unless you have that kind of a uh, you know. Um, a devotional service to the Lord, or if you're a devotee to the Lord. So this was the point uh, she discussed yesterday. And then also uh, uh, she talked about that the elements are both inside and outside uh, in this universe. And those uh, possessing the bhakti, they have the Lord's pastime in the names. They only have access to it, which are not different from him. And if they have the like pure devotees, they can by just sitting even in the material real realm, they can see the pastimes like you know, uh, like you see on the television. So everything is televised in their heart. Um, all these pastimes of the you know Lord Krishna. And uh, the last point she makes that even though the Lord is all pervading, it doesn't mean He doesn't have a personal form. And only personal form is only accessible to the the people who have supreme bhakti. Supreme bhakti is the key, or the the what do you call it? Uh, the important uh, ingredient for. And, you know, seeing or unsolved or solving the mysteries of the of Krishna. So these are the points she discussed. So I'm going to start now. Uh, the other point which Prabhupada makes in this purport is that he says uh, the first part he talks about is that Lord can award anyone and everyone the liberation. That's easy for the Lord. But he says very uh, rarely he awards the pure bhakti. So, you know, if you if you have any desire, you're seeking, you know, you're, there are many, you know, a lot of people, a lot of devotees, they have a different desires. Everybody serves the Krishna because of their, you know, uh, because of their, you know, different desires. Some people, some devotees want that they should not have any, you know, uh, problem in the material world. Some devotees serve Krishna because they are afraid of, you know, there should not be any kind of difficulties or problems coming to the family. Some devotees serve Krishna because they just, you know, uh, uh, because they feel that uh, we should do it. This is our duty. Some people, uh, some devotees are, you know, serving Krishna because they've been told to do so. And uh, there are very few devotees who just have the pure love of Krishna. And such kind of a devotee is what Prabhupada is talking about, you know, that this, the love of pure love of God is awarded very to a very, very, uh, you know, a few devotees are very, uh, it is very rare to find such devotees who just love Krishna because who just serve Krishna because of the pure love. And uh, uh, Prabhupada says it's been confirmed by the Narada that by, you know, the you know, but awarding this kind of a bhakti, awarding this pure devotional service or loving devotional service to the devotee actually binds Krishna uh, in the heart of the devotee. So it's been, it's been said by Prabhupada here that why this is a great mystery, that even though Krishna is in every, uh, you know, in every living entity, as living as super soul, but Krishna is not in any one of them. Only the only the uh, devotees who have actually uh, have a unclenching faith or or 
you know, unalloyed devotion to the Krishna, they, because of the love, because of their unflinching faith, the Krishna actually is being, uh, what do you call it? If Krishna resides in their heart, is because of their love. And because of that, because the Krishna resides in their heart, they actually get the position what Krishna has. Like here, they say they, this is Krishna is Achuta. Achuta means whatever, and he is infallible, whatever he wishes, it comes true. Same thing is, given the same quality has been awarded to his unalloyed devotees, that whatever they wish, everything comes true. And that's why Brahmaji is talking to Narada, saying, whatever I say, it never goes it never it never uh, goes wrong. It, stay, it starts out to be the same way because they are so close to Krishna that they almost get the quality, the same quality as the Krishna of uh, you know uh, Achuta. So this is a really uh, kind of you know important and uh, the quality of a pure devotee. And uh, Prabhupada says it's very difficult for a layman to understand this part. Because this is kind of a mystery, and this mystery is only unlocked if you have the person is actually on the path of a devotional service, but may not be the, you know, uh, the pure devotee. But if, if the devotee is in the path of a devotional service, he would be able to understand that there is a such kind of a thing which is which can happen or which takes place actually. Otherwise, for common men, it's just a mystery. They feel that people are making it up or is something you know which is not true. Even though they don't say openly, but they will always think, oh, he must be, you know, making this up or this just by coincidence, <coughs> like that. And uh, Prabhupada also talks about the touchstone. And he compares the pure devotee to a touchstone. He says, like, touchstone is so very rare to find. And touchstone is something which is, uh, you know, if you touch that, uh, any metal touches that touch stone or touch stone touches that metal, the metal turns into the gold. And same is the quality of the pure devotees. If any pure devotees, if you come in contact of a pure devotees and somehow you get the mercy of a pure devotee, you, you, you know, they can award you the bhakti immediately. It doesn't need a long process, you know, of uh, going through, uh, you know, step by step up on a sadhana, on a very bhakti. And they can award you immediately the prim bhakti. So this is this is like a touchstone. Same way, the the devotee, the pure devotees of Lord is also very rare if you be seen. And also another property of the uh, another characteristics of the pure devotees is that for the pure devotees, Krishna becomes their servant. An example is like you know the Arjuna, and Krishna was actually became the you know uh, charity for uh, the for arjuna he was and arjuna was riding the chariot and he was actually taking him around this is the this is the kind of uh, you know glorification of the god that even though he's god he has everything but because of the love because of the unflinching faith these the Krishna becomes a servant of the pure devotees, and that's why he doesn't award the pure devotion to uh, you know everyone so easily. It's very rare to find. Uh, and Prabhupada uh, also talks gives actually the uh, highlights the importance or the supremacy of the bhakti yoga. He says it's good. Uh, you know, among all different processes of the knowledge, there's a Jnana Yoga, there's a, you know, Ashtanga Yoga. Um, the, the the best which was being talked about, not the best, is better which is talked about is the, the, you know, the yoga. Because in yoga, what you're talking about, you are, you're trying to achieve the super soul. And you're controlling the senses and the mind and to get in touch with the super soul. But better than that is actually the bhakti yoga. And he talks about that in bhakti yoga, you are actually superseding all that uh, steps which you take in yoga. It's like, you know, if you've got a million, million bucks, you already don't need a hundred bucks. So Prabhupada gives an example of the jnana yoga to the 10 bucks, and then you get the, you know, the ashtanga yoga or the, or the yoga 
you know, the, become the master of a yogi perform, performance is a hundred bucks, and then you bet the bhakti yoga that is a million bucks. Because in in jnana yoga, you are just getting the you know um, Brahman realization of the God. But when you become the yogi, then you are getting the Paramatma or the super soul perception of the God. But when you become a, a bhakti yoga or you become a devotee, in that case, you're getting the Bhagavan perception of uh, the God. That means you're getting all three such chit and ananda. It's all knowledge, all, all uh, you know, uh, all blissful, all, uh, all uh, you know, eternal <laughs> uh, knowledge, uh, blissful. So you get all these three characteristics and Bhagavan, which is the highest, uh, you know, uh, perception or highest knowledge one can attain. So Bhakti Yoga is compared to be the best among all the yogas. And this is actually the most confidential part. And here in chapter 9 actually, same thing Krishna spoke to Arjuna. He, he spoke to Arjuna about, you know, in the second verse, the whole chapter 9 actually talks about that name of the chapter itself is the most confidential knowledge. And the second verse actually uh, addresses directly what has been talked about here. And I'm going to read the translation of the second verse, which says, This knowledge is the king of education, the most secret of all secrets. It is the purest knowledge, and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization, it is the perfection of the religion. It is everlasting, and it is joyfully performed. And they're talking about this, what is this knowledge? The knowledge is of the Bhakti Yoga, or the knowledge of devotion, that's what they're talking about. And uh, a little bit from the purport which Prabhupada says, and I really liked it, I'm, I'm not reading the entire thing, I'm just reading a little uh, paragraph from here. It says, those, for those who are engaged in devotional service of the Supreme Personality of the Godhead, all sinful, all sinful reactions, whether fruitified in the, in the stock or in the form of a seed, gradually vanishes. That means all our karmas are not as being nullified. Therefore, the purifying potency of the devotional service is very, very strong. And it is called Pavitram Uttamam, the purest. Uttamam means transcendental. Tamas means the material, material word or darkness. And Uttama means that which is transcendental to the material activities. Devotional activities are never to be considered material, although sometimes it appears that the devotees are engaged in just like ordinary men. One who can see and is familiar with the devotional service will know that they are not material activities. They are all spiritual and devotional, uncontaminated by the material modes of the nature. It is said that the devotion, execution of the devotional service is so perfect that one can perceive the results directly. This direct result is actually perceived and we have practical experience that any person who is chanting the holy names of Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare, in course of chanting, without offenses, feels some transcendental pressure and very quickly becomes the purified of all material contamination. And this is actually seen. This is actually seen. Furthermore, if one engages not only in hearing, but also, but in trying to broadcast the message of devotional service, devotional activities as well, or if he is engaged himself in helping the missionary activities of Krishna consciousness, he gradually feels spiritual progress. This advancement in spiritual life does not depend on any kind of previous education or qualification. The method is itself is so pure that by simply engaging in it, one becomes pure. So this is the kind of a uh, knowledge we're talking about and about the devotional service. We are all, all of us are kind of engaged in some kind of devotional services. Uh, and 
this is the benefit of it. Even though we don't realize it at time, but all, we do all feel that there is some pleasure in it. We are finding some kind of satisfaction. We are finding some kind of things which we are, you know, Krishna revealing himself to us in different, you know, shape, forms, different experiences, in different ways. And that is why we are strict with that. You know, most of the time, if you don't feel anything tangible, then your faith slightly, you know, kind of uh, goes away. Or sometimes what happens, you've got, you know, the you know the mercy of the spiritual master or the mercy of the devotees that keeps you going and you, you know, feel a little something and then you are so hopeful that something better is, you know, Krishna will definitely be more merciful and you get some more, you know, uh, I will not say you see Krishna, but you get some kind of, uh, you know, signs from Krishna that actually you are on the right path or you are following the right direction. So, <clears throat> Prabhupada further talks about here in this, uh, the Bhakti Yoga, he also gives the importance of the Bhakti Yoga. And he talks about that Bhakti Yoga this knowledge, whatever is that, uh, you know, serving the Lord with, uh, you know, devotional service, loving devotional service, actually this knowledge first was given by the, you know, Krishna to Brahma himself. And Brahmaji then gave it to Narada. And then Narada explained it to Vyasa. Then Vyasa explained it to the Sukhdev Goswami. And that same knowledge has been coming down to an alloyed chain of discipline succession. So whatever knowledge we are getting through these scriptures being written by Vyasadeva, actually coming through the direct disciplic subsection. And if, we, if if the Prabhupada also declares very boldly here that if we are fortunate enough to get this knowledge in these, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, knowledge of the Bhakti Yoga through the disciplic succession, through somebody who is a disciplic succession, then we have a chance. To understand the mystery of the Lord. That means the Lord can reveal Himself, and also we can understand what is actually the real message of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the sound incarnation of the Lord. And it has been actually, I was listening to Maharaj's classes, and he was talking about that Brahmaji saw the spiritual world when he was sitting on the lotus flower. Because when he came, when he, uh, when he uh, you know, uh, sprung out of the navel of Lord Vishnu, he was, there was nothing. There was no light, all darkness. And he heard the word tapa and he started doing the, you know, meditation of the word. He did the, you know, meditation for thousands of years. And when this, uh, and he did it as a, as a devotional service to the Lord because he didn't have any self-interest. And when he started doing that, he actually could see the spiritual world, or uh, he could see the Goloka Vrindavan just by sitting on the lotus flower. So everything was telecasted to him by the Krishna. And same thing happened to the Vyasa. They were also saw the Goloka Vrindavan. And how did he see? Because when he was, uh, when Narada was given the this uh, you know job of uh, spreading this knowledge by Brahmaji. Uh, so that people are, you know, be able to uh, receive this knowledge and be able to uh, make use of it. Then, then Narada gave this advice to the Vyasadeva. And he asked Vyasadeva, he didn't say that, like, he didn't give the knowledge or anything. He said, you just sit in a meditation without having any material thought. Just focus on the lotus feet of, of the God. And then whatever comes to your mind, you write it down. So what he did, he did that. And while he was doing it, he could see the Goloka Vrindavan, all these things were, all these were manifested in his heart. And that's how he wrote whatever he wrote in all these, you know, Bhagavatam and all other scriptures, uh, holy scriptures he wrote. And one more thing we were talking about, like uh, the devotional service. And in devotional service, Krishna has given in Bhagavad Gita a very clear message for all of us to how to, actually what to do and how to do. So it is in, you know, the chapter 18, uh, verse 64 onward, he, Krishna gave actually direct uh, hint to Arjuna. He told us that uh, what is actually the pure devotion service and how should we uh, you know, proceed towards it. And he says, in especially in uh, verse 
chapter 18, verse 65. It says, Man manaman mad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru maam veshasi satyam te kati jnane priyosime. He says, that always think of me, become my devotee, worship me, and offer your homage unto me. Thus, you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. So he disclosed this confidential knowledge to Arjuna because Arjuna was very close to him and also he was his disciple and a friend. Also, he talked about uh, the same thing and, you know, further continuing it. And he also, uh, you know, give further instruction in text 65, chapter 18. He says, Sarva dharma paritya ja maam ekam sharnam raja aham tamam sarva pape bhyo mokshi shiya sami masucha amandan all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall be, I shall deliver you from all sinful reaction. Do not fear. So this is actually the way uh, to go for the pure devotion service. Always thinking about Krishna, uh, never actually uh, using anything or never actually uh, paying attention to something which is not in relation to the service to Krishna. So this is the key to, to you know, to be on the path of the pure devotion service. We are all, all of us, we are on the, you know, uh, we have started our journey. We are, we are on different stages, all of us. Uh, you know, some people are probably more advanced than, uh, you know, uh, some people are not that advanced like me. We are all following it, but if you continuously follow, we'll have, you know, follow the parampara, we follow the, the message given to us by the spiritual master, by the different, you know, uh, through the Bhagavatam, different messages. If we keep following it at the same time, just praying to Krishna, probably we'll be in that, uh, you know, uh, we'll get one day Krishna in our heart, maybe not this lifetime, maybe, you know, several lifetimes, but uh, that is the way to go. So that's all I have to say. Uh, in this chapter, I share. Please feel free to add comment or uh, you know whatever you have to say. Hare Krishna, Shraddha Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Yeah, thank you so much. Like, it's such a wonderful class. Thank you so much. Very nice. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Sorry, I'm driving, so my indicator is on. Um, so you may hear some background noise. Um, but the whole time you were reading the purport, I was only thinking, like, really, like, Prabhupada has made us so fortunate by giving us this pure devotional service that that Krishna chooses to not give even to the most elevated yogis, the demigods, even they don't have this great fortune of serving Krishna. That, that great fortune we all have got. So I was just feeling very um, like fortunate, very blessed in terms of what we have received. So like a lot of gratitude was good. Srila Prabhupada all through the class. Um, another thing that was coming to mind is that you were describing how like Lord Rama and um, many other great devotees they have qualities um, like that of the Supreme Lord. Actually Krishna even describes that those who perform devotional service Krishna actually decorates them with qualities like that the demigods and um, I was specifically remembering that there's four kinds of liberation um, where one comes um, one has the appearance like that of 
we live um, in qualities of Krishna, and then of course to become one with Krishna is not a great thing to aspire for. Otherwise, devotees don't aspire for these four kinds of liberation, but it is only kind of giving me the picture of how the gradation goes, and eventually um, one gets to actually live and serve Krishna. So some thoughts must be but else I thought that like, mm -hmm. your class is very nice. Thank you so much for bringing very nice references. Thank you, Mataji, for adding. Thank you. Actually, Krishna awards everything, whatever, all these liberations. We, if devotee doesn't yeah. have to ask for it, if you simply serve yeah. Krishna with devotion, Krishna awards all these different and much more than the yeah. liberation actually. Yeah, yeah, that's true, Mataji. Actually, that's what I was thinking because when we read those kind of liberations here, I thought that they kind of made a connection uh, where we say that actually one starts to develop. Uh, like godly qualities and one starts to get that kind of a form although we don't ask for it but that's what actually happens so that's what I was actually thinking of sharing yes, yes <clears throat> and Krishna actually reciprocates with everyone whatever level we are we get the same reciprocation and we yeah. and Krishna is very fair with everybody he awards hmm. if the person is, you know, in person is Krishna awards them that too. And if hmm. the person is looking for Krishna's love, Krishna awards that. So only thing is we have to desire with, you know, the Krishna's love and Krishna's, you know, uh, mercy somehow if he can get that. Hmm. Yes, Mataji. Yeah. And another point that you were making that devotees like Lord Brahma, they are infallible like the Lord, they don't fall down. I was actually remembering one story of Srila Prabhupada where um, Srila Prabhupada actually speaks in one class and he says that all of you, he's talking to his disciples and he says, all of you can fall down, but I, I cannot fall down. And all the devotees went and said, Jai Prabhupada. And then later they saw that Prabhupada was going and then he was praying to the deities after the class. So the devotees went and asked him, Prabhupada, you said that you will not fall down. What are you praying to the Supreme Lord? And Prabhupada said that I actually pray that I may never fall down. That's why I will not fall down. So yeah. I was I actually remember remembering that. that past time of Prabhupada that actually the pure devotees are always with the Lord. So then there is whether they're in this world or they're in any other world, their heart is mm -hmm. with Krishna always. So there is no chance that they can fall down from that platform or going away from Krishna. Because yes, Krishna is always thinking about his pure devotees and pure devotees are always thinking about Krishna. Thinking about Krishna. Yeah. Very well said, Madhuri. Yeah. And that's what actually this whole verse is all about. That's what they're talking about here, that like the materials, they are inside and outside. I'm inside them and also outside. <clears throat> Same way in Krishna, in the pure devotee's heart, he is always <clears throat> there inside the heart and is also outside. So that is what actually what you said is absolutely truth and actually the essence of the whole world. Thank you again, Mataji. Thank you. So <coughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shraddha Mataji, for a very nice class. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I don't know, I had some things I was going to say, but they're kind of, it's kind of a mute point because it's pretty obvious. Um, to me, it's just how I feel about um, why Bhakti Yoga, we know that it's the highest and it contains all the other yogas inside of it. But for me, um, the bhakti yoga is the highest because of the reciprocation of the Lord and the person, you can have a personal relationship with the Lord. It is not easy, 
of course, you cannot approach him, but you know you can pray to him. Yes, you, you can. It depends, uh, but uh, obviously in the right mood, uh, you, can, you can talk to him about just, just about anything. And um, I've noticed reciprocation, in, even though, of course, I'm, um, I'm chanting on the Namabas level, I'm not uh, a pure devotee, and all of these things, um, hold on, somebody's knocking at the door here. My husband, okay. I think what's, what's important is that, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. I totally lost my train of thought now. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but this is not reciprocating with you. Yes, I mean, I don't think in any of the other religious traditions that exist, except for probably um, Christianity in the early, early stages. In the early, early years of Christianity, people were practicing bhakti yoga. But, as it, of course, it got watered down and it no longer is like that. I mean, they didn't know they were practicing bhakti, but they were. And... Uh, so this is the only tradition, it seems, where the Lord reciprocates with his devotees and that he can be controlled by love, by love. He is controlled by love. That's the only thing that can control Krishna is love. And so I can't understand how it doesn't make sense to me that someone would want to just merge into the you know, into the oneness, into, you know, because then all individuality is removed. Um, there's no more personality. And so it, it makes perfect sense to me that, that the Lord has a personality. Um, aside from the fact that, you know, he, he can, he can appear as the Brahma Jyoti. He can appear as anything he wants. Um, that he is reciprocate. He reciprocates uh, like a person with us. And anyway, I know everybody knows this, so it's kind of stupid for me to bring this up. But no, no, but that's how I feel. Good to hear again. Please don't think that way. It's good to hear again those things. You know, that's what we. Everything we have, you know, whatever we say in every. Well, there's something or other we already heard before, but it's good to hear again. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, Mataji. Um, um, that for me makes the most sense to me. It doesn't otherwise. How could something be the highest when it? I, I don't know. I, I, except for maybe an atheist who doesn't have these, you know, or an impersonalist. It doesn't make sense. This does not make sense to me. To, to want to desire that I know we're all on different levels but anyway that I, I don't want to ramble uh, that's what's coming to my that was what was coming to my mind how could anybody desire um, any other kind of yoga unless they really don't know who God is I think that's the problem is that if one is just desiring these other levels of yoga, they don't really know who God is. Because they, they wouldn't want that if they knew who he really was. Yeah. Maybe their understanding of the God is slightly different than what we have. It's like, you know, how you perceive things. Maybe, you know, when we say, oh, I'm rich, so it is a very, it's a relative term. So if, if I say, uh, you know, the XYZ is rich, uh, for a person who's really poor, he thinks, oh, rich means like he has got like $100 or maybe $1,000. So who's already yes. little have more money, he will say, you know, oh, he must be a millionaire. And who's a millionaire will think, oh, he should be, you know, kind of a billionaire. So it's kind of a relative thing. They probably don't perceive the God or don't, uh, you know, uh, see the God what the way we see the God. Their definition of God is very different there. But... Um, in terms of even with, I have seen certain things happen in my life already that where you say, well, you know, if you don't get some sort of uh, sign from God or you don't get some, 
<coughs> some kind of reciprocation, you would like not stay. You know, you would you would be thinking this is all oh, this is just all made up. But it, you know, when when, when the guru has said so many times, this really works. It's like a science, and I'm not saying everything is to my way. No way. But I've seen some changes, you know, like um, the level of suffering is not so intense. You know, that prior to the initiation, I'm not, and I know that Guru does not take all of our karma at the first initiation. I understand that. But still, I, I was pretty amazed that even if certain things make me suffer, they don't stay for long. They don't, they come in, they go out. They're not as um, debilitating as they were uh, prior mm -hmm. to this. And I, you know, that's big for me. That's huge. The level of suffering used to be just horribly intense and mm -hmm. um, inside, you know, in my heart and uh, just, um, there was another thing that I've seen change. Um, not so much with, with no, I, I'll just leave it at that for now because it's not coming to my mind. But I've seen some changes that if you really are sincere, even if you're not doing it perfectly, your, your devotional service is not perfect. The Lord, he loves that, the, the effort and, and the love that you're putting into it. He really does mm -hmm. love that. You can feel his, you can feel it. You don't have to see him to know that he's reciprocating. You, you can feel it and see how it works in one of, in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I have, and I, I, I never saw it so clearly before. I knew that prior to this in Christianity, yeah, things, my prayers would get answered. It's not like I'm just saying, <laughs> Krishna, all I want is for you to answer my prayers. No. Um, just the things that are block it, blockages for me, I've seen be lifted a little to a point where, oh, this never happened before. Certain blockages in my life, whereas uh, before it was, it was horrible, you know? So I, I know the Lord is, He's, you, and I asked Guru Maharaj that once. I said, well, how do you know he's there? He said, you can feel him. Come on. I said, you're right, mm -hmm. Guru Maharaj, because I obviously have not seen him. But you can, he says, you can feel him. He is there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all I wanted to say, Mataji. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mataji, for sharing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm here. Shada, thank you very much for your beautiful class and everybody's contribution. Um, I want to comment to Govindan Lila how you were talking about how the other traditions, um, you know, they don't uh, like as opposed to bhakti, which is so rich and the the reciprocation that's coming through as opposed to the other religions. And I was just thinking when you were saying that about how um, we've heard about the story about the jar of honey and how if you hold the, the jar of honey and it's, and it's closed, the lid is on and you see it, but you go to, you, you want to taste it. And if you go licking the outside, it's not going to give you the taste of the honey. You actually have to open it up and, um, you know, dip the spoon in and um, and taste. And I think the difference is between the other um, the other practices is that bhakti allows you to open up the lid, dip the spoon in, and actually taste Krishna. And um, because you know, because of this whole personal, I mean, the understanding that he's a person um, and that he has personality and he reciprocates um yeah I, I i don't know i just thought of that whole idea that you know we've heard before in other classes well I thank you very fun. much that was very nice manasi ganga Mataji. and thank you for taking the class for me yesterday i was really oh, out perfect. of it yesterday oh so thank you very no, much you're, you're welcome 
You're welcome. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Madhuji, I wanted to share just one last thing. Actually, when all of you were talking, um, I was I was actually one of Krishna's name is Vasumana. Vasumana is the name of Krishna that he is remembering Bhishma Dev all the time. And um, it is described that Bhishma Dev was a pure devotee of the Lord and he remembered Krishna at the time of his death. All the time when he was on the bed of arrows, he was actually only talking about Krishna. So Krishna was actually, uh, his, one of his names is Vasumana. And also I was remembering all the different names of Krishna like he's so glorified because of the relationship he has with devotees like Nanda Nandana, Yashoda Nandana. Like he has so many, Kopi Jana Vallabha. Like all, so many of his names are actually because of the relationship he has with his devotees. He's glorified in that way. So it's so special for him to be with his devotees. As much as we want to be with Krishna, he wants us to be with us like millions of more times than what we would actually desire to be with him. Yeah. So that's all I wanted to share, Mataji. All the time you both were talking, I was remembering those things. This is a very beautiful sharing. Thank you all very much. Thank you. I think it's six o'clock now. And we have anyone else wants to say anything? Mataji, Ruchi Mataji. And I think she's not there anymore. Okay, we can stop the class. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Shrimad ki jai.